Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel and some more Hail Caesar coverage. As we move along here today, we're going to take a look at a pretty big and beefy army here. That is the late Imperial Romans. So as they say here, 4th through early 5th centuries AD. And definitely allows for some interesting things as the time period reflects. Um, as we'll see in the army list here with um, allied or uh, often as uh, not uh, enemy Goths or Franks. But here are ways of kind of incorporating some of those ever-shifting uh alliances of convenience. So for those maybe not as familiar with the later Roman period, things to look up and get some research done on so you're kind of familiar. Diocletian, the Tetrarchy, Constantine, of course, um, Battle of Adrianople, Julian, um, and then the Battle of Strasbourg. So jumping in here, um, this is again a little bit different than our classical Roman list that we've seen so far. But again, um, infantry will play a part. So although here, cavalry is also mandatory. Um, so basically both at 25% or more um, have to be uh, infantry and cavalry. So, I mean, you can certainly end up with all kinds of interesting mixes, right? 75, 25, either way, 50, 50, or something in between. But again, at least a quarter uh, between infantry and cavalry. So much more balanced than a lot of the earlier Roman lists. Artillery is still here though, which is always great. So, and this is kind of a fun description here, right? Must uh, be at least three uh, comita tenses, uh, it's probably horribly uh, pronounced there, and limitane, limitane um, units for every artillery unit fielded and no more heavy or medium artillery than light total. So all that being said though, uh, again, the larger the game, the more artillery um, you're gonna be able to bring in, right? So, and obviously if you focus on fielding those types of units, then you, uh, it's another way for you to squeeze artillery in. Divisions here again, kind of a typical thing, must contain at least four units, uh, excluding skirmishers and have a commander. And skirmishers per division, 50% uh, of infantry, so. Now we get on to the list proper. So this is a long one. So anytime we get these massive full pagers as we often do for the Romans here. So taking a look, um, starting off with the medium infantry, comita tenses with spears and or javelins. So again, keyword medium here, right? So we're not um, starting off as heavy infantry in these in pretty basic stat line, but we have all kinds of upgrade paths available. So we can go the simple route, three points extra, bump them up to heavy. Um, but then also we can give those heavy, uh, or um, actually just arm them in general with heavy throwing spears or doubts counting as Pila. So for either flavor, uh, we can also make them drilled if we want to add special rules in, and there's no restriction on that, which is always nice. And then uh, up to half of those guys can be elite. So you can really get a whole lot of mileage out of just that one unit there and field all kinds of variants. Um, and again, just having special rules on command essentially here, uh, if you really want to go that route and you know, obviously the points cost is going to increase, but again, still having a very uh, elite uh, uh, army there. So then the Lima Tanai uh, medium infantry with spears and or javelins. So again, these guys are going to be levies all the way across the board, but that's all right. We can actually have heavy infantry levies here if you want to, again, upgrade a little bit. And again, very cheap for this stuff. And then the similar upgrade from, from above, right? Heavy throwing spears or darts counting as pila. So we still get that action. But again, this is basically a levy um, unit that we can dive into. Then we get the Scolai Palatini heavy infantry with spears and or javelins. So this is basically uh, a one of unit. So again, uh, you know, when you have something like that and considering, uh, you know, the stats, but also the rules for it, um, it's just something you should probably take, right? So kind of our best of the best here. So drilled and elite come with it, but then also brave, which we don't see too often um, in these lists. So nice to have there. Then a whole bunch of light infantry. So we're really spoiled for choices here. Uh, the Lanciari with spears. So again, just basic light infantry, but normal size units. Um, similarly, we could field them as small units. And again, the very generous small, small unit discount there. So 20 points and then 13 points. Light infantry archers, again, full size unit, but again, then the option to field them also as small units here. So again, just you're spoiled for choices with this list, certainly. Archers with body armor, so that's a new thing, right? We haven't seen that really before. Uh, just one unit of those, 
but um, is it really worth it? So compared to the regular archer unit, uh, it's one point more to get you a six up save. Um, you know, debatable. Uh, it's only one unit, I guess might be worth a try if you've got a point to spare, but overall, not all that great. At least I don't think so. Skirmisher package here, pretty standard stuff. So javelins as small units and slings or bows as small units as well. So we've seen that a million times. Then our cavalry component here is fairly, fairly decent, um, if not actually pretty good, right? Medium cavalry with spears and or javelins, clocking at 27 points. Again, it does what medium cavalry needs to do. But here, as above with the infantry, our, our main infantry, that is, we have the options uh, to get drilled and elite here. So just having that on command is pretty solid. So, and again, the points uh, increases as, as we've seen above too. So three points pop for each of those. And again, here, the uh, elite is not actually um, restricted right up above, and the infantry up to half can be elite. So pay close attention to that. There's nothing like that for the cavalry there. So all your cavalry could be elite and drilled. Um, and then our heavy cavalry with spears and or javelins, again, basically just a much or well better uh, version than the medium cavalry. And again, the similar upgrade pass there if you're looking to have those heavy cavalry. So, um, so extra to make heavy cavalry cataphract with contos up to one unit. Again, we've seen that uh, several times before, but it's a more expensive upgrade, four points. But again, it's just going to be for one unit, and it's going to be a pretty damn good unit. So worth considering. Extra to make the heavy uh, cavalry or cataphract uh, drilled. So again, if you're already spending the one or the points to upgrade your one unit to the cataphracts, you might as well then also make them drilled, but then elite, as we see with the below upgrade as well. So you might as well go all in on that one unit and just have, again, a very badass um, cavalry unit that is going to do some work if used properly. But again, if you're just going with uh, all the other regular cavalry or other regular heavy cavalry units, then, again, we can all have uh, drilled and elite as well. So it's going to get pricey, but, again, you can... You can go super cheap on this and just field lots and lots of units um, or throw, again, lots of elite things or some combination at the enemy here with this list. Uh, moving on, though, uh, again, we're very, very spoiled on the light cavalry side as well. Light cavalry with javelins as small units. Again, we know what that is all about. And they have feigned flight, just uh, standard, not paying extra or anything like that. And no other restrictions. Horse archers as small units. And again, Parthian shot here. So we have that on command as well, for as far as, again, having access to multiple units there. So pretty decent missile component, mobile missile component here, um, as opposed to our infantry archers. And then <laughs> this is fun too. So Hun, light cavalry with spears and or javelins and bows. So again, uh, kind of a toolbox unit that can get everything done. And they also just come with faint flight. So overall, strictly better than just the generic light cavalry. Right, you're paying two points more, but you're also getting bows, so you get that long-range uh, ability there. So, and no other restrictions on it either. So, pretty interesting. We still have um, uh, camel-mounted light cavalry as javelins, as small unit. You get one of them, feign flight, possibly worth taking if you want. And then getting into the artillery component. So, light artillery scorpion bolt throwers. They're drilled, medium onagers, and then heavy ballistae. So again, very nasty in the firepower side, and then everything here is still at leadership eight. So still very diverse list that can still do a lot of different things and still put the herd out um, if used correctly. So again, fun one to collect, just uh, not not that this uh, later Roman um, period here always gets the most attention, um, often more of you know, the the Republican age or the early Imperial Roman era, but having this uh, is a pretty nice list. Now it would be nice if, uh, again, just in general, there'd be more, a little bit more gaming in the later period um, and a little bit more spotlight on it. So hopefully this is a list or type of list that can inspire you to do so. So, and again, uh, hobby wise, certainly something fun to paint up as well. Again, you have the sort of influence of the empire here with just other uh, people's uh, units that you can bring in and certainly something fun to paint up that'll look a little bit different than again the classical sort of Roman list that we um, kind of um, 
are very familiar with. So um, again, strong list, lots of possibilities here, lots of flexibility in how you want to kit out your units. And basically you can just about do whatever you need to. And just the, the sheer um, quant or access to quantity of special rules here for your units. Really, again, you can go from just plain Jane units to um, drilled and elite all over the place. And again, very nasty cavalry component as well. So um, what would a solid list look like here? Well, you know, we might probably take advantage of as much as possible. Uh, we know we have to have at least 25% infantry and cavalry. Um, just so just depending on the size of the game, you know, probably keep that fairly balanced just because again, both sides are really, really good here. Um, might lean a little bit more towards the cavalry, just, um, uh, just to have that extra mobility, but, you know, save a little bit, um, here on your overall points for, uh, the artillery, just on how you get those incorporated. So again, overall really fun list, um, and we'll see what we get into next over the next few um, armies that we're looking at. But let us know in the comments, guys, what you think of this um, late Imperial Roman list here. And um, if you uh, collect it or play it against something like that um, in that period, let us know and how that has gone for you and um, what, uh, what challenges you see in facing something like this and or... Um, uh, in commanding it. So hit us up in the comments there, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll have more Hail Caesar reviews here coming for you shortly.